Hey, welcome to the Carol Remarks Podcast. My name is Carol, and this is where I host my remarks on glamour, pop culture, and front page news. Let's get right to it. Hello and good morning. Oh, happy day we made it. Good morning, my little love bunnies. I hope you're doing great. I hope you're having a fantastic day, each and every one of you, even the ones who have blocked me. Okay, I'm serious now. I got to get over that. Um, So I have a couple of headlines, fun little interesting headlines that you are not going to see in regular mainstream media headlines right now. Although sometimes they do make it to the headlines. It's so funny because on my podcast, I'll talk about it. And then like a day or so later, it's on national news. Not that they're listening to my podcast. That's not what I'm saying at all. I'm saying I might have a knack for picking out things that other people might be interested in. Okay. And then we're going to do a course, Dear Abby, towards the end. And then we'll do a question of the day. All right. So fun little, I guess some of them are fun little headlines. Um, Let's go over to my X file because every morning when I wake up, I go to my Twitter. No, I go to New York Post or the Daily Mail. And I will skim the headlines and anything that pops out at me, I'll skim over and read for like a minute. And then I'll put it out on my X file so that I know where to go find them when I do the podcast later this morning. Okay, first up is microdosing chocolate bars leads to seizures, heart issues, vomiting, and hospitalizations, the FDA warns. Now, I know a lot of you are very skeptical of the FDA, anything government-wise, and I agree. Uh, There are some things, though, we need to look at. So the Food and Drug Administration is warning that a chocolate bar laced with mushrooms is causing a bevy of serious health problems with users. First of all, we don't need the FDA to tell us that. I think with our common sense, we should already know that. Anything laced with drugs is probably not good, but people are out there will do it and doing it more and more. It's amazing to me what people are willing to do to their bodies. Diamond Shrums brand microdosing chocolate bars are designed to for consumers to engage with mushrooms in tiny increments. However, multiple people nationwide who ate the chocolate The brand's website calls them a subtle, sumptuous experience and a more creative state of mind. Experienced seizures, depression, vomiting, and abnormal heart rates. So this is a, this is Diamond Shrums brand microdosing, microdosing chocolate bars. This is something that's manufactured and you can buy? That's my second of all question. Uh, others reportedly passed out after taking the $25 bars along with becoming confused or agitated, according to the FDA. Well, if you're eating the whole damn bar, I would guess so. And look, that it is a brand of mushroom candy bars is causing severe health issues. Where, my other third of all question is, where would you find these things? I hope to God they're not out in mainstream availability where kids can get this surely not so far there have been eight cases reported four in arizona two in indiana one in nevada and another in pennsylvania so not a whole lot (laughs) and you gotta ask how are these are these are they eating like five at a time uh Of the confirmed cases, six people have been hospitalized. Consumers should not eat, sell, or serve any flavor of Diamond Shrums brand microdosing chocolate bars and should discard them, the FDA warned consumers while instructing retailers not to sell or distribute the product and to instead hold it in a secure location until additional instructions can be provided on how to return or safely dispose of the product. So, is this government overreach, perhaps, uh, trying to shut this down and not sell drug-laced foods? (laughs) This is insane and crazy. I don't know if these things are clearly marked. 
I don't know. It's weird. The government agency also warned that the full list retailer selling the brands are currently unknown, but it is specifically marketed as candy to young people. Oh, dear. So there you go. The item commonly appears online in, and in smoke in vape shops alongside diet weed called Delta 8 THC. Well, there you go. That's why I've never heard of it because I don't frequent vape shops. I'm 57 years old. I'm of a different generation. I guess I'm a, I guess I'm old Victorian, uh, Victorian prude. <sighs> Whatever. I'd rather be an old Victorian prude than lap dog crazy. It's, I don't know. Uh, so FDA is working to determine the cause of these illnesses and is considered the appropriate next step. So there you go. There's that. Now look. Uh, I understand some people need sp some specific drugs like marijuana for medical purposes, perhaps. I'm not denying that. Um, I'm not one of them. Uh, I'm just saying, just be careful out there, people. Of course, you're not going to listen to me because I'm old Victorian prude. Uh, that's a t-shirt, right? I'm an old Victorian prude. <laughs> I don't think anybody would buy that. All right, so the next one up, another FDA. Gosh, how did I? I guess I was just on the FDA kick this morning. Uh, the 28 sodas, juices, and other drinks recalled by the FDA over harmful chemicals revealed. All right, here we go. This is from the New York Post. All right, the FDA has recalled 28 beverages so far in 2024. The Daily Mail reported. Now, this is still from the New York Post. All but four of the drinks were recalled because they had drugs, bacteria, or harmful chemicals in them that the company didn't disclose. The recalled drinks include a pain-relieving tea called Himalayan Pain Relief Tea, which didn't disclose an anti-inflammatory medication ingredient on its label. Martinelli's apple juice was also recalled because it contained arsenic. A toxic, me a toxic metal that may increase the risk of bladder and skin cancer. Around 1.9 million bottles of Fiji water made by Natural Waters of VD Limited were recalled after three types of bacteria were found in the water in addition to the mineral manganese, which is high amounts can cause brain damage. And just recently, four drinks produced by Charles Bogini Company called Pink Lemonade, Yellow Lemonade, and Yellow Lemonade X, as well as the flavoring cola flavor base, were recalled over food dyes linked to cancer risks. So that goes on and on. Uh, you, can, you can read more about that, but those are the ones. Oh, here's a list of some beverages recalled so far this year. So, the FDA faces pressure to crack down on food and beverage companies. Uh, so, here we go. Schweppes Zero Sugar Ginger Ale. <laughs> what? No. PepsiCo's Mug Root Beer. I believe I have... I have... <laughs> I have purchased a Mug Root Beer and drank it be recently. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> So, yeah, lots of, uh, oh, wow, lots of stuff. Powerade Zero Mixed Berry, Powerade Zero Fruit Punch, Powerade Mountain Berry Blast. Oh, there's a bunch of stuff on here. Anyway, that's out on my X-File if you would like to go read that, if you care anything about any of that. Uh, so, here is a weird, I have two, two more stories, then we'll get to Dear Abby. This might be a longer episode than I anticipated. So here we go. I'll just try to skim over these real quick. Four Iowa college instructors stabbed in China while visiting Partner University. Wow. Now this you might hear on the mainstream news a little bit later. Four instructors from an Iowa college were stabbed in a public park in China over the weekend while in the country to teach at a partner university, according to school officials and lawmakers. The instructors from Cornell College in Mount Vernon, Iowa, were attacked inside Beijing Park um, in Chilin City Sunday during a visit there with a faculty member from Baiyue University. 
the president of the small private college said Monday. We have learned that four Cornell instructors teaching as part of a partnership with a university in China were injured in a serious incident during a daytime visit to a public park while accompanied by a faculty member of the partner institution. A Cornell president, Jonathan Brand, said in a statement, we have been in contact with all four instructors and are, as wow, they have pictures of them all on the ground. Wow, that's insane. No students were taking part in the long-standing program between Cornell College. Okay, the family of the one victim told Iowa Public Radio that all four instructors survived the attack and are being treated at a nearby hospital. Their current conditions are unknown. Oh, wow, that's insane. What? It didn't say what. It's unclear what led up to the stabbing and whether the attack was targeted or random. Videos and photos of the attack posted to Chinese social media sites like Weibo were quickly taken down, but some of the footage still made its way to X. The U.S. Department uh, said it was aware of the reports of a stabbing involving Americans in China and is monitoring the situation. Well, don't go to China. Well, you're going to get stabbed here, too, so I guess it, you know, just be careful of your surroundings. Wow, it's just crazy. All these stabbings now. Ooh, there's been a lot of knife attacks. You look for the left to start saying, we have to ban the knives. We have to ban the knives. All right, here's one last story. We'll skim over it. It's from the Daily Mail. It's quite interesting. And this should be on crime stories if it's not already on a, some kind of a crime podcast. The FBI hunting 500 500 serial killer truckers loose on America's roads. Their favorite highway for finding victims revealed and inside their mobile rape and torture chambers. This is crazy. I'm not going to read all of it. It's just really bizarre. At a truck stop in Nashville, Tennessee, long haul driver Bruce D. Mendenhall was seated in his cab when a homicide detective approached him. Police were hunting a serial killer. Weeks earlier, the naked body of a 25-year-old woman, Samantha Winters, had been found in a dumpster. Winters was wrapped in plastic and duct tape, then shot in the back of the head with a 22 pistol. So you know, my God, a 22 pistol is not that high of a caliber. So now another victim, Sarah Nicole Hubert, also 25, had been found dead. She, too, was shrouded in plastic and shot in the head. These victims were two of nearly 1,000 women who cops believed had been murdered by long-haul truck drivers. And finally, they had a break in the hunt. Scroll down, scroll down, scroll down. Okay. The detective from Nashville Metro Police Department asked Mendenhall simply, Are you the person we've been looking for? Mendenhall shrugged. If you say so, he replied. While police found inside, the 56-year-old's truck cab defied belief. Investigator called it a killing chamber. Good heavens almighty. The stash of torture implements included a rifle, a nightstick, tape, handcuffs, latex gloves, sex toys, and a bag of bloody clothing, according to the police report. DNA on the clothing matched five murdered or missing women. One was Karma Purpura, a 31-year-old mother of two, who was last seen at a truck stop in Indianapolis, Indiana, nearly 300 miles away. I want to know how these women are being abducted at truck stops. Now, maybe, okay, let me read on. So, this 31-year-old mother of two. Now, I'm thinking my um, automatic Victorian prude mind goes to just someone traveling. Like, I travel up and down the highways all the time. Well, not all the time, but I have before. I stop at a well-lit truck stop, you know, gas station all the time. Uh, I don't go all out of the way. But maybe, maybe this is something else. Maybe this, you know, I understand there are women out there that will sell themselves for money. So maybe this was something like that. I don't know. Let's read on. 
Uh, also in the truck were Purpura's mobile phone and her bank card. Blood splatter in the cab suggested Mendenhall had killed her there, yet he refused to say where her body was hidden. Her remains were not found for another four years. Mendenhall, okay, I'm not going to read anymore because we're running out. I'm running out of time. The story is very long. It goes on and on and on. Wow. Wow. It's got pictures of people. Oh, no. You need to go read that one. Out of all the stories uh, brought to you so far, go read that one. On my X-File, it's called FBI Hunting 500 Serial Killer Truckers. Here's the fair favorite highway. And it's from the Daily Mail if you want to go search it. It's, it's on there somewhere. It's insane. I will go finish that story myself. All right, we need to go find a Dear Abby story so that I can do that for you. All right, here we go. This is uh, might be a good one. I only read, like, the headline. Let's see. All right, Dear Abby, over the course of 12 years, my husband and I have gifted more than $400,000 in down payment money to our adult daughter and her husband. Both are now in their mid-40s. I gave them most of this money behind my husband's back. Okay, there's your first problem. You gave them money behind your husband's back. So you and your husband did not give it to them. You did behind your husband's back. Number one, that's the wrong thing to do. Uh, so recently, my daughter has been pressing me for more money, saying good grandparents and parents help their kids. I, get, I give them $1,200 a month in cash and student loan payments, and I have done this for 10 years. I finally told my husband about my deceit, and he is being incredibly forgiving of me. He understands I have insecurity issues, and I worry about losing my daughter's love and contact with our grandchildren. Two years ago, our daughter told us that due to our difficult personalities, she needed boundaries. And my husband and I were allowed to visit only one week a year. They live 3,000 miles away. This came as a shock since my husband cared for our grandchildren from birth until the family moved away when the kids were four and six. We have traveled with them and thought we were close. Given all of this, I told my daughter I felt manipulated and I was giving them a two-month notice before ending the monthly contributions. She has now cut off all contact with us, blocked all phones and social media. I'm devastated. I feel hopeless and I am seeking counseling. I can't shake the feeling I'm at fault. Your thoughts blocked in Washington. This is so sad. This is really sad. Uh, so I guess the parents have been paying off her daughter's student loan and all that for 10 years. Wow. Giving them money. And now she's now she's saying no we can't do that anymore you know you got to start doing it on your own and now the daughter's like no well then you can't come over whatever i don't know this is a difficult one so here's what dear abby says dear blocked your only fault rests with the fact that you gave your manipulative and ungrateful daughter a lot of money and concealed it from your husband bingo you can't make someone love you by buying their affection. It's either there or it isn't. As you can see now, doing so was fruitless. Your daughter is using your love for the grands to punish you for not forking over even more. And she thinks you have a difficult personality. Wow. I'm, in, uh, I'm overjoyed that you will be discussing this sorry situation with a licensed mental health professional. Okay. Blah, blah, blah. So there you go. Mm, that's a difficult one. That's a difficult one. So, anyway. All right. Uh, question of the day. All right. I have a couple of different options for questions of the day for you t this morning. Since we talked about, you know, drug-laced candy bars, I'm going to ask, what is your favorite candy bar? Uh, mine is Milky Way Dark. Midnight Milky Way Dark. I love that. That's probably my favorite candy bar. Um... Hopefully, it's not laced with drugs. And so, the other question is, what is your comfort food? I love macaroni and cheese. That would probably be my number one. My 
or mashed potatoes. I like mashed potatoes and I also like macaroni and cheese. Those are my two comfort fo foods. But I guess the easiest thing to me to make for me would be the and I like the cheap stuff. I like the cheap the cheap boxed macaroni and cheese with the with the powdered cheese in it that you mix it. Oh, that's my favorite. Come on now. Yes. <laughs> All right, and yes, I will confess, I can probably sit down and eat a whole box of it in one city. I don't, I've, I haven't done it. I think I've come close, <laughs> and I've only probably stopped because I was like, I can't eat this whole thing. Oh, well, anyway, those are the questions. Either what is your favorite candy bar or what is your comfort food? All right, thanks for listening. What's that? Who pays your salary? What's that? Who pays? What's that? We're not a democracy!